want to just greet the Cornerstone family. Uh, your pastor and I, Eric and Sandra, Luke, uh, Hannah and uh, Matthew, have been friends for a long time. And uh, we're uh, uh, always encouraged by each other. And we've had this ongoing uh, friendship uh, for quite a while. And, uh, and your church family, he's been here, I've been there. It's just been a great relationship, and I'm thankful to the Lord for your pastor. Uh, I want to talk to you about something today that I think uh, really can uh, alter uh, your walk with God. I, I, I really believe that. I believe as we go into 2021, uh, I want to talk to you about prayer today. Uh, and really, um, uh, your, your prayer life, we, we often say prayer life. But the idea is that God has something so much bigger in mind than what we use just the word prayer. And I want to get into it a little bit with you. Um, so I'm believing that next year your walk with God is going to be uh, greater and deeper perhaps than it's ever been before because God himself is inviting us. He's drawing us uh, to draw near to him. And the Bible says, when I draw near to him, he will draw near to me. He's always drawing us. The Holy Spirit's always uh, uh, drawing us out. But, but he's wanting us to come and take our prayer lives to a deeper Level. Let's begin with Isaiah. This will be our text for today. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. Here's what it says. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Now, prayer is, is more than just petitions. Uh, really, I often say it this way, that when you and I uh, uh, go to God in prayer, He not only reveals who He is to us, which is huge because it develops how we think about Him and who He is and what He does, but it also reveals us to us. And part of walking with God is you have to know what's going on the inside of your heart. You need to know when you're not where you should be. You need to know when, when uh, spiritually you're not uh, awake You've got to have discernment, and by spending time in God's presence, that's what wakes you up or that's what catches you in slumber. You have to do the work of examining your own heart. David was clear in the Psalms. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Well, you, you have to know the condition of your heart. I know for a lot of people, uh, there's no discernment and they have no clue. They can walk around in arrogance and pride. But the reality is, when you walk around in pride, uh, you're the only one that doesn't recognize it. And that shows us spiritually that I've got to spend the right amount of time with God uh, so that uh, God can reveal himself to me and he can reveal me to me. Moving to the New Testament, Luke chapter 19, verse 46, he, say, he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer. He says, But you have made it a den of thieves. This has to do with knowing the condition of your heart. Matthew chapter 14, 23 says it this way. And when he had sent them of the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone. I don't know about you, but during this pandemic, many of us have been uh, getting used to being more isolated or being alone more. I'm a people person. I love to be around people. But I got to make sure that I don't want to be around people so much that I neglect private time with God, because in those private times, God reveals himself to me. I remember taking uh, uh, one of our ministers uh, on a retreat out to California with a group of youth, and he went up into the top of the mountains and, and wrote a song and uh, uh, came back and finished his album up. Now, it's not the mountains that did it, but his encounter with God inspired, encouraged, and provides something for him, that alone time that nothing else could do. You can't stay busy uh, when you've got to keep condition of your own heart. Let me just say this about that. Too often, we are focusing on everyone else's heart and what everyone else is doing and how they're doing it and how they're saying it without recognizing uh, that hurt people hurt people. And many times I can tell you hurt people just by listening to them talk because out of the abundance of the heart, uh, the mouth speaks. So today, I want to go into 2021 uh, reminding you really of eight uh, areas that you and I have to make sure that we work out of our prayer closet, uh, we get it away from us so that we can experience uh, answers to prayer like never before. When your prayers are not answered, uh, we should examine ourselves, of course, in, in light of God's Word. John 14, 13 says it this way, And um, whatever you ask in my name, I will do, 
that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Think about that for a moment and the power that that could release into your life. The challenge with that, by faith, we know that I don't get everything I want, but why not? Part of it is we're fleshly, we're carnal, we're human, and we have to, to work at spending the right amount of time with God. I'm not see a lot of people when I grew up told me, you gotta pray eight hours a day, you gotta spend eight hours in the Word a day. And maybe that's what some people have to do. I, I, I probably, let's be honest, I do not spend that type of time with the Lord every day. But here's what I need. I want to live in the presence. So every, every prompting, every, every time I get an inclination that I need to stop a drop and roll, I, every moment where I hear God's whisper, I got to shut things down and make it a priority because his voice, one whisper from heaven can change the course of his life. He wants to answer your prayers. He wants to answer my prayers. But I want to share another verse with you. In James chapter 4, verse 3, he says, Yet you do not have because you do not ask. So the first thing he's saying you've got to ask, I think the motivation of needing God and going to him in prayer is a good thing. But when you go there then, you've got to have your heart marinated. You've got to take the time to listen and explore and find out what's making you the way you are. And so he goes on to say, uh, and you do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your own pleasures. That word amiss literally means from bad intentions or a bad heart. Uh, you're asking for things when your heart's not right. You're asking for things because you're selfish. You're, you know, it's amazing to me in the body of Christ how many weak, um, anemic prayers I hear prayed uh, because people are trying but if you don't get beyond praying for, you know, the butterfly to, to, to uh, you know, uh, get its leg healed, uh, you, you're, you're, you're going to have low-level prayers your whole life. God's trying to move us to be the kind of mountain-moving faith people who can believe great things or big things or world-changing things, not just sometimes the little petty uh, stuff that we focus on and we call it a prayer. God is the God of the universe, and if all you can do is pray that you, know, you get, uh, have enough money to pay your bills, you're going to discover uh, that that's a selfish prayer. You say, why is that? Because I don't want enough just to pay my bills. I want enough to help pay your bills. I want enough to <coughs> advance the kingdom. And that's going to require that I have more than enough just to pay my bills. See, see what I'm saying? When you focus and listen to your prayers, you begin to discover, are those just natural prayers? Am I just praying thoughts in my mind, or am I praying big, audacious, giant prayers that come from the throne of God uh, so that I can believe him uh, for uh, what he's doing in preparing an end-time harvest? Well, let's get into it. The first thing that can hinder uh, your prayer life is what I'm going to call today an unharmonious relationship uh, between husband and wife. It can literally hinder your, hinder your prayers. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 says it this way, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as a weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. Did you catch that? Some of you are wondering why your prayers aren't being answered, but you're not even being nice to your spouse. You're not honoring her. You're, 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 you're just getting frustrated. You're getting mad. You're, you, I don't get what I want. Why don't you do? All those things, listen, can hinder uh, your, your prayers being answered. The second thing I want you to see today, and I'm going to give you eight, by the way. So that was one. Number two, selfishness will hinder your prayer. James 4, 3, let me read that to you again. He says, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. A lot of selfish prayers going up and then people sit around and wait and when God doesn't answer their prayer, they get mad at God or they get angry at God or frustrated at God because he didn't answer their prayer. But their prayer was selfish from the beginning. It was all about them and what they need and what they want and how they, how they want to get it. Here's what I've discovered with people who, who really operate and live in prayer. They serve uh, God and they serve the, the body of Christ, their families. And as a result of them taking and praying and interceding for others, God takes care of them as a result. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Quit putting you first 
Go to God, say, God, clean my heart. Wash me clean so I can hear what you want me to hear. I can say what you want me to say. And I can intercede and change things around the world because you are a great, a big God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could dream, ask, or imagine. The third thing I want you to see today uh, that will hinder your prayers for 2021, uh, by the way, uh, for the rest of this year too, okay? But going forward, uh, an unforgiving spirit will hinder prayer. Matthew 5, through 24 says, Many Christians go without answers to prayer because they have wronged others or have been wronged and have failed to humble themselves to forgive and to seek reconciliation. Oh, friends, I've been around the church now, I don't know, 40 years. It's, imagine that. Uh, I, tell me I don't look that old. But I've been around for a long time. And one of the challenges that I see is people regularly want to ask whatever they want without dealing with the unforgiveness that's in their heart. And they won't seek to reconcile it. They won't seek to get better. They just kind of sweep it under the rug. I hope it goes away. Uh, only to find out their prayers are being hindered and it affects their walk with God and they begin to doubt that God is able. He is willing and able. He can part the Red Sea. He can answer a prayer for you, but you have to examine your heart. Do you easily forgive? How do you know you've forgiven somebody? Listen to this. How do you know you've forgiven somebody? When you quit bringing up their past. Let it go. Trust God with it. It doesn't change it. It changes you so that you can see that person the way God sees them. And it releases you from a a hold that the enemy wants to hinder your prayers. Uh, Number four, uh, unbelief will hinder your prayers. James 1, uh, 6 and 7 says, But let him uh, ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea tossed to and fro by the wind. For let not a man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Listen, this is, this is huge. Because uh, when I, Lord, will you, will you please, uh, Lord, you know, if it's possible. Lord, if, if, if you're, you're big enough. Those are prayers starting with doubt. See, the reason why I can't pray any prayer and expect it to happen is because not all the things that I request or pray start with God. They start with me or they start with a thought or a worldly intention. The scripture says, go speak to that mountain and tell that mountain be removed and cast into the sea. My perspective on that verse is this. I don't get to go to speak to mountains, name it and claim it and blab it and just say whatever I want. Mountains go because they're in my way. I have to hear God, and when God says, say to that mountain, be removed, I have to take the time to listen to this. Know God's voice, I've got to know my voice, and I've got to know the enemy's voice. So when I discern through all three of those, the things that God's saying, I repeat, I proclaim, I prophesy, and then when, it, when he says it, listen, nothing can stop it. Somebody say amen to that. All right, well, let's go to the next one. Known sin in the heart will hinder prayer. We've said a lot about that, uh, but let me go to Isaiah 59, uh, 1 and 2. Listen to this. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Did you hear that? God's not mad at you. He's not angry at you. He's not trying to hold, withhold from you. God's not a Santa Claus where you give your request list and you hope you're on the, uh, a good list, not the naughty list. God wants a relationship with you where you fully examine what's going on in you before you begin to just go out and blab whatever you want. Does that make sense? Well, Psalm 66, 18 says, I, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Can I just say that knowing God uh, the way I do, and I know many of you, He is benevolent and loving and wants to speak to you. He wants you to hear his voice. What you and I have to do is do the work of making sure that the things that are tangled up and and, uh, sinful are being uh, regularly groomed and taken out so that nothing can hinder uh, the voice of God in my life, the word of God in my life. You know, when we go to California, I still take trips of young people out there and... uh, I call it the 120 shift. This is a road as you're going up the mountain uh, to Yosemite National Park that heads off 
a, it's a quick left that comes up as you're climbing up the mountain. And right there, I pull over our vehicle, we'll pull over in, and, and it's right next to the Merced River, which uh, in the spring is roaring and it's beautiful and it's loud. And I'll get all the students out of the van and we'll go stand by the water and we'll try to talk. And it's almost impossible to talk because the loudness of the water, the roar, raging river that's, that's coming right by us, it's next to us. You can almost feel the spray. It's, we're that close to it. And I'll tell them, guys, I want you to focus on, uh, on listening to me for a couple moments. And so I've got to yell for them to hear me, but they've got to really intently listen. They've got to focus in and um, to get the message. And that's sometimes how our world is. It's loud, it's noisy, it's crazy, it's, it's busy. But we can take the time to, to calm ourselves and say, God, here I am, I, I'm listening. Sometimes I've heard people say when they had an inclination or a prompting or the Holy Spirit, they said, you know, I, you know Lord, I, I, you know, I still, I'm, not, I'm kind of busy. I, I, I got stuff to do, I'll get back to it. And then they forget about it. You and I, when we even get a glimpse or a hint that God may be speaking uh, to us, to our spirit, we need to stop, drop. We need to say, God, here I am. What are you saying? I don't want to miss that. Because remember, one whisper can change the course of your life. All right, here's the next one. Um, the sin of covetousness. Now, I, I mentioned this particularly. It's, of course, one of the uh, Ten Commandments, but... He says in James chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, Where do wars come from? Or where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desire to, for pleasure, uh, that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. He's simply saying here, sometimes when we start competing and comparing ourselves with others, why don't I have a bigger this? Why don't I have a nicer that? Why don't I have more stuff? How come he got that? I don't get that. All of a sudden, you can slip into a mode where you begin to covet other people's things, and that clouds and pollutes your heart so that when you go to pray, it's almost like it's a, it's a fog machine on the inside where you can't see clearly, and therefore you don't pray the right prayers. Hey, this is good stuff, guys. I, I hope, uh, look over at somebody real quick, give them a high five and say, man, I could use this right now. Let me give you a couple more, and then we'll wrap it up. Neglect and indifference to the Word of God. This is another one of those areas that uh, Christians who've been Christians for a while uh, can really get in trouble because they don't put the proper amount of honor on the Word of God. Listen, you don't go to church for your pastor. Praise God, I love your pastor. You don't go to church to, to just listen to others. You go to God's house because you want to hear His Word. His Word is alive. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. God wants to fill us with his word. He wants to quicken something in you because when the word is put in and the spirit breathes on that word, that's when you and I begin to move out of the rut of, uh, uh, of boring, doldrum, um, just prayers from my head to saying something. Have you ever done that? Have you ever said something? Go, I don't know where that came from. It came from the Holy Spirit saying something through you. But you've got to make sure you're not neglecting uh, and have indifference towards God's word. Listen to Proverbs 28, verse 9. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Can you, can you pick up what I'm putting down right now? If your heart is not in the right condition, every prayer that you pray can be coming out of a hollow, empty, um, uh, just speaking words with no life in them. We need to meditate on God's word day and night uh, so that when he sees us praying, even if we don't pray it the right way, he gets our heart and he says, you know what, that's a prayer I'm going to answer. It's full of faith and um, it is not neglecting the word. Um, all right, last one. Um, neglecting prayer itself. Well, I hope if anything from 2020 that you'll realize that uh, you can't put your trust in chariots, you can't put your trust in presidents, you can't put your trust in, in your church, you can't put your trust in everybody else. Listen, friend, this year, if nothing else, should be driving us to prayer because I don't have peace without the Prince of Peace. I don't have answers to my prayer, or I don't even know what to pray sometimes. Thank God I could pray in the Holy Spirit. And I'll pray with, with my, my English, but I also pray with, my, with my, um, uh, uh, the Spirit 
as he leads me because sometimes I don't know how to pray. But remember, it's getting your heart in a condition so that no matter what you say, as you say it with the right heart before the Lord, meditating on his word, making sure you're spending time with God, uh, I'm believing that this message and this next year could be our greatest year if we'll really heed the counsel that I'm giving you right now uh, about prayer. Let's wrap this thing up. What did I say? The things that will hinder you in prayer. These are just eight. But the first one was an unharmonious relationship between a husband and wife. What does that mean? It means work on your relationship with your spouse. Don't get tired and and weary and well-doing. Keep doing the right thing. Why? Because you want to keep your heart in a good place. doesn't mean you're always right. It shouldn't mean that you're always fighting to be right. It means uh, after, (laughs) after 36 years of marriage, I don't even care who's right anymore. I want peace and I want my heart in a position that when I put a request out there, God says, that's, I know that person. Number two, selfishness will hinder prayer. The third was unforgiving spirit will hinder your prayer. Unbelief will hinder your prayer. Known sin in the heart will hinder your prayers. Uh, The sin of covetousness. Then we said the neglect and indifference of the word of God. And then finally, we said the neglecting of prayer itself. Listen, friend, how tragic it would be to allow any of these things to hinder what God wants to answer in your life. I, I'm a pastor. I, I, I deal with people's issues all the time. And the last thing I need is hindrances to my prayer because I have literally people calling me every day. They text me every day. They, they, I'm online every day. I, they, they Facebook me every day requesting prayers. And let me say this as I close. Do not say you're going to pray for somebody and forget about it and let it go because now you're not only weakening your own prayer life, but now when the prayers don't happen for other people, it's happening because, listen, you said you'd pray. You didn't even pray. Here's what I'm challenging you to do right now. Um, um, My staff here at our church, uh, if we say we're going to pray, we stop and pray right now because we want, number one, keep my heart in the right position but I want a prayer breakthrough for people. And when they see breakthrough, they can give glory to God because God answered their prayer. It wasn't me and it wasn't you. Hey, Cornerstone family, we love and appreciate you. And uh, some of you might need to give your heart to Christ today. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Uh, Wash me, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. When you do that by faith, the Bible says God stops doing everything that he's doing and he comes and he listens and he's gonna enter into your life. John 3 says, you must be born again. Some of you today, tell somebody in the church, I received Christ today. Those of you who are believers, who've been around for a while, why don't you dust off your prayer life, make sure for 2021, it'll be in the best shape it's ever been. Watch this, and more prayers will be answered than ever before. Hey, Pastor Eric and Sandra, love you guys. Appreciate you all. Have a great Christmas, and we'll see you in 2021 praying like never before.